Episode 11 starts off with the heftiest concentrated heap of utter horseshit I think I've ever seen. The show just shovels shit. Straight to the mouth. Shoves it in there. Eat it. Eat the shit. Eat it and love it, you little bitch whore. Say thank you and ask for seconds. The students are being trained and tested for their first official guardian mission. There is a sea dragon running amok and it needs to be stopped. So... To train for this underwater mission, the students stand on boats and swat their weapons at this humongous octopus. How exactly do the skills present here translate into this? Also, why are these first year students sent to battle against the beast? Where are the upperclassmen, the official guardians? Where the hell is everyone? There are dozens of students graduating each year, no? And you're telling me not a single pro guardian is available for this serious life-threatening mission? Why don't the teachers handle this? The triad are standing right there! The most powerful trio of sorcery in all the land, with the ability to bend space and time! Snap your fingers and fix the problem! Why are you sending these dumbass children to die, you absolute sociopaths? And as is the norm at this point, the action is just embarrassing. Look, if you don't want to put in the effort, then just write something that doesn't entail combat. This limp nonsense garbage is just waste of screen time and budget, and makes the show look even more inept than the writing already is. Also, the punching bag octopus is not really an octopus, but refers some kind of submarine piloted by Caraway that he made using magic. He conjured an underwater octopus mecha with magic. What? You can just create complex machinery using magic? The possible applications of this spell are once again endless, and this is the one thing you decide to use it for. And apparently it still has organic parts for some sanity devoid reason? And why did you decide to pilot it yourself? Why not just make it an automaton while you are at it? Better yet, send the machine to subdue the sea dragon, instead of putting lives at risk. You insane, miserable shit biscuit! And the mission is in fact a request for help from another Guardian Academy, which is just brand new fucking information to me! There are several academies for these useless D&D rejects! Why can't they handle this themselves? The crisis is happening on their turf, it's literally their speciality, in what reality do the people of the Aqua do worse handling underwater problems than a bunch of newbies, both in terms of fighting and aerial cosplaying? The premise of this episode gives negative fucks about anything. It wants things to happen, so they are going to happen. To hell with whether or not it makes sense, or is in any way narratively satisfying. This is the simplest thing you could ever come up with. A monster terrorizes a region and needs to be stopped. And these utter mental infants are incapable of managing even that. It's not written for children. This is written by a child. An adult child. This is the first two minutes of the episode. And my brain is already turning into nutritious breakfast. Also, the dialogue is just... Great teamwork. Nice use of violence. There is no one on this sanity forsaken planet that has ever said those words in that sequence. Look, English is not my first language. I hail from the far northern reaches of Europe. You can hear this accent. And even I can tell that this line is clunk as fuck. Redraft. Especially the dialogue, you bunch of worthless sea cucumbers. And speaking of nice use of violence, the show keeps making this one dead on arrival gag. 
The oh haha, near death experiences are funny, ain't they? How did this cunt nugget manage to unleash his arrow at Caraway on accident? Was it an accident? How is he not expelled on the spot for assaulting a professor? How did Caraway catch the arrow? I know the reason for everything is because funny. But there is no joke. Random stuff happening is not comedy. There's a hundred factors that go into crafting functional humor, and everyone teeters at different things, but this is just lame. Without cause and effect, appropriate reaction from the participants, some kind of irony, a speck of wit, not to mention proper timing, there is no joke. This is just stupidity filling the screen, and it's indistinguishable from everything else that's happening, so there's not even shock factor. There is a time and a place for levity, but first you have to actually have something humorous to share. This is just repeat of episode 7, where the whole academy is painted as soulless murder enthusiasts, and Xenia is the only sane person around. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Also, since we are once again establishing the fact that violence and death are just quirky and funny, I hope this episode doesn't attempt anything along the lines of dramatic death scene, because that would just be conflicting tone, hypocritical, and all around incompetent. I hope. Mermaids and a sea dragon? <gasps> My dreams! They're coming true! We'll scale mountains and fight mermaids! Funny how continuity works. Anyway, the girls get picked for the mission, along some leftovers, no surprises there. So canonically, the main four of the show are each the top students of the freshman class. After a brief boat ride, the girls are met by the potion teacher waiting for the chosen champions. Again, why are you sending the kids into the maw of danger? By the time the rest of the imbecile academy is done wasting their time with all this, you yourself could have just gone and sedated the dragon on your own. We're looking for the Cyrenia students. Oh yes, they're dead. <gasps> <laughs> Said I'm seeing you. Your baby is dead. <laughs> That's what you'd hear if your baby fell victim to the thousands of death traps lurking in the average American home. I'm not sure whether or not I've made it clear at this point, but I really, really, really hate all of these people. Let's get these magic rings on. Whoa! Oh, lovely! How does this work? Just add water! <laughs> Down go the girls, and out of nowhere, we are treated to this... Let's say homage to magical girl transformations. And all I can think is... Why? Why is this here? A burst of light and poof, fins would have sufficed. This just feels like the show is informing us that magical girl anime are a thing that exists. And the show's creators are aware of the fact. Which is just... Good for you? I just can't fathom the priorities of this show. Normally, these kinds of transformation scenes are used to pad out the episodes, to save money by reusing the same sequence over and over again, or perhaps to add a bit of flair and flash and hype to dramatic moments. But here... it just comes and goes. The scene is nowhere near flashy enough to count as spectacle. There's no personality. No flavor. It's just awkward. Straight from the bargain bin of inspiration. Just to hammer this home once more, if you mismanage your own resources, time, money, effort, to this degree, then you have no right to claim that your shit show's failings are due to budget constraints. You can just fuck right off. <laughs> oh, oh, hi! Quiet! We're not safe here in the open water. The Scypheth is hunting. If he smells me, he'll chase us for food. Yes, the sea dragon will chase you for food, which he will put in his mouth, and then he will <laughs> chomp 
with his teeth. How the hell did you write that and not immediately commit seppuku for being such a worthless author? I have no idea. A lame chase ensues as the dragon indeed emerges to chase the girls for food. He's got an appetite for real mermaids. You go after me. Oh, no, 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 you can't say that. Real mermaids? As if someone changing themselves into something they weren't born as makes them less real? That sounds like a transphobic statement to me. Quick, cancel this show. Cancel everyone responsible for this evil, bigoted, slanderous hate speech. Or at the very least, keep your standards consistent. Whichever is easier. Should we have a signal in case anything goes wrong? Something like a... Uh... This is getting a bit uncomfortable. I, I don't I don't like this. Is there something you'd like to get off your chest, Rosemary? About your views concerning the merfolk? That's gibberish. You don't know our language. Oh, or was that a um a a joke? Uh, yes, joke! <laughs> Very good one. <laughs> but no more. So here we are in the Underwater Kingdom Academy Mermaid Place with whopping three people. No, really, we never see anyone aside from these three. Did the sea monster already eat everyone else? Or did the mermaid melody eat all the budget? I am Elodie, Coral and Kelp. Meet Parsley, Sage, Rosemary. And... Uh, time. Time. A nice name. I like it. I like things, too. <laughs> okay, I guess we know time's type now. I cannot get over how fast I am underwater. Why not stay a mermaid? We'd get to hang out more. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just feel the love? Aren't you so invested in this? Wasn't there some kind of dragon to deal with? So what exactly is the plan? What crucial part will the Spice Girls play in sedating the monster? We will bait and distract him. Rosemary, you'll sedate him. How? Bubbles Venom, it's powerful enough to knock him out. Rosemary is going to hold this electric seahorse and give the dragon a poke. That's the grand strategy. Give the dragon a poke with a seahorse. Just a tiny, teensy technical question. And don't take this the wrong way, but why the fuck couldn't you do this yourselves? Why do you need these for? Just take the Pokemon and stab the dragon. Done. This premise makes no sense. It makes negative sense. It actually takes reality and just sucks it dry of common sense. The world has turned objectively, quantifiably dumber by this episode's existence. I can feel my brain, my soul, my love for storytelling, my willingness to live eroding. I fucking hate this show. Why does it exist? And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon. As well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaya Vanderwatt, and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.